Booyaka Shaw, welcome back to another episode of Can't Handle the Heat. It's your boy G Swizz, joined by the Broski. Broski, how are we doing? I'm doing great. So excited. 75th episode. Yeah, this is not just any episode. Together. Crazy, man. Crazy. And that's that's only counting the ones with, oh yeah, as you can see, Micah will not be joining us today. He's not able to. But that's just the he's, ones with he's Micah. Death, he's on his deathbed. Not yeah. literally, but he's, he's, a, he's a little under the weather. He's okay, though. He'll survive. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, if I had to guess how many episodes we've done, like, total, let me think, before Micah, what, around uh, 12, 12 before Micah? Probably, maybe more. Uh, yeah, I'd say 12 to 15, the shows, sure. but those are the shows. Yeah, that's just show. Dude. totally separate thing. If you want some OG content, go back to the shows. Go back to the Out of System shows where Gage and I were shooting out of my bathtub the first couple ones. Dude, I watch. I actually watched the huddle when we were the huddle episode two the other day or yesterday, I think. Just a partially of it, just to just to keep you just to keep you grounded, know where you came from. But with that being said, um, in order to celebrate our seventy fifth episode, we decided to host a Q and A. If you saw our post, we directed you to our Instagram story, and basically this episode is gonna be an entire Q and A. But before we start with that, I want to give a quick shout out to Manscape. Use a promo. What, what's the promo code, Joe? Give it to him. And he's volleyball. It's all cap. All cap, As baby. always. All cap. And Dr. Price Electrolyte to keep you nice and electrolyted. Use Add System 20 for 20% off. Link in the bio here. And then again, if you want any of the merch that have been featured in our videos lately or the one that I'm wearing right now, boom. Link in the bio there. And last but not least, we're scheduling the tour here. And if you're a player, if you're a parent, if you're a club owner, whatever you are, and you want us to come to your club or your area, email. Uh, we'll, I'll put the email below, joe at adsystem.net. I'll put the email below uh, so you can contact us and then set up a call and then uh, make something happen. But with that being said, let's get to these questions here. What do you say here, Joe? 75th episode, it's question and answer time. It's all question it, and answers. Let's do it, baby. All righty. All right, Joe. This has been a hot one that we've been getting every uh, podcast pretty much that people had the opportunity to ask us questions. They said, did you guys fire Ratto from out of system? Fire Ratto? Um, so I'll handle that question. I'll take that question. We did not fire anybody. First of all, we never directly fired anybody. We had conversations with anybody that left. We had conversations with, and it was, I think they came with the understanding like we had expectations that we wanted like delivered on and you know if that wasn't going to be met for long-term goal purposes then it was just kind of like more of a uh decision on both parties it wasn't like we go to somebody and it's like yeah you're done like that's never the case it's like this is where we're going with things this is going to be the expectations this is you know if they have other ideas about where they're going in their life then and I'm not saying that Rado is no longer involved. He's going to be involved. You're going to see in a short, short time here how he's going to be involved. But at this point, he definitely uh, is less involved and focused more on his volleyball career. Well, we we can bring him on sometime to to clarify that all up once we take care of some stuff from our end. Um, I can't speak too further on that at this point. But that's uh yeah that's the best way of answering it. I would say um, at this point of where out of system is. Yeah, that's all love still. Like, I'm still good friends with his family over here. I'm still good friends with Brad. I always still call all the time. So oh, it was yeah. an understanding on both parties. So it was still all love. There's no there's no beef. Um, all right, this is quite another question for you, Joe. Exercises to improve setting skills that really work. Setting exercises. So for me, from a young age, coaches always ask this. I firmly believe in footwork. Footwork's the base of everything. You know, I think... Um, that's always been a, uh, huge kind of like asset that I've had is like just the ability to get to the ball quickly and get to any ball. I joke with my coach here in uh, Germany that my dad growing up, when we would do setter training and we do six on six, if I didn't go for every single ball and set every single ball with my hands, he'd make you run sprints and he'd make you do these like ridiculous drills. 
So that's okay, why yeah. I'm always like you see a lot, especially in Europe. Setters give way a lot to like other people to set the ball, and for me, it's just like how I was trained, go after it. But I feel like I like I don't feel like I'm hindering our team anyway. Too, it's like I just been trained to do that and put up good hittable balls no matter what. And so that's always been for me the mindset, super aggressive mindset. As you know, Mike Gage and I were we're tactical and we're smart about a lot of stuff we do, but at the same time, it's all with an aggressive sort of freestyle. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, technically and everything, I, I feel like we uh, we focus a lot on that. But when it comes to the game plan stuff, when we play together, it's like aggressive. Whether it's like attacking on serve receive, you know, setting wise, you know, being super aggressive, uh, setting the ball close to the net. Uh, you know, every once in a while you take a little bit of risks um, at times, but it pays off a lot because... When you are that aggressive, things usually fall into place for you. I, I tend to, like, if you kind of, like, back on your heels waiting for the other team to make mistakes and hand them chances, I feel like more times than not, then you allow the game. You don't ever feel like you have control of the match in a way. And that's why, you know, people talk about our grass game, grass triples. I want to talk about this a little bit. So we played grass. We played some triples this uh, this week. And as everybody knows, it's on social media now. It's out. Our team has kind of a uh, COVID outbreak, so we're pretty limited in training. And so we were doing a couple different like game, small games and stuff. We did three v three. I'm like, dude, there's a re- like. I feel like Micah Gage and I have such a solid understanding of like the mindset you have to have to play three v three. We're not like I wouldn't say like we're the best like grass players necessarily, but I think the mindset and the strategy that we have is definitely different than a lot of people who play it. Um, and it starts with that kind of aggressive mindset. Like, we're going and we're attacking on all phases of the game. And more times than not, I feel like uh, we kind of have stuff fall our way because of that. It's like, you know, we go on runs. We're able to side out high efficiency. We're, everything's aggressive. You know, there times here and there where people might criticize it because you might give up a couple cheap points here or there or give away points uh, that maybe – you don't want like service errors tacking out in the net and stuff. But for us, with that aggressive mindset, we, uh, we, that's just how we all play. And I think we have that kind of synergy, uh, synergistic sort of, uh, camaraderie about that and how we, and how we go into the, each match. So that's what I love about it. That's why I love playing with these mm-hmm. guys. Yeah. I think also, um, being aggressive helps with, it just helps overall because let's say, okay, let's say me. My setting has always been them got something I got a lot better over here with. But I've realized that I'm, if I'm more aggressive setting, then I'm going to be a better setter. And sometimes I'm going to make mistakes and get yelled at or whatever. But, like, your play will thank you because of it because you're going to be a lot more free and it's going to open up a lot more of your game and you're going to be a lot more relaxed because you're just, like, like I said, freestyle on it. So that's something to keep in mind. All right. What's one position you, in volleyball you can't play? Can't or don't want to? Can't. That's the other thing about Gage, Mike, and I. <laughs> I feel like for the most part, like, if we, like, in a, in a match, you tell us anything, we'll go and freaking do it. And feel like that we could do it at, at a pretty, com- at a competitive level at some point. Obviously, with our stature, middle blocker will be tough to do. Or hitting, I don't know, everything. But our mindset's like, Lefty middle. when we're in competition mode, Whatever you say, we'll go freaking do it. Uh, and we feel like that we are capable of it, so to speak. I would say I wouldn't want to play middle. <laughs> middle is kind of a crappy position to play. But uh, but I don't think there – I would never say, like, yeah, I definitely can't do that because yeah. that's just I, just – I just know myself. As soon as I – yeah, maybe outside, like, I'll joke about it. But when I get on the court, I have confidence that I'll be able to get it done. Get Absolutely. It done. For me, it would also be – yeah, it had to be the hardest position for me to play is middle, but I'll make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Lefty and the yeah. Not may not look good on paper, but winners find a way. Okay. Um, what's the next one here? How did Micah come on board and as he wasn't involved in the very start? I can answer that. So what happened basically, Micah was our second guest ever on the huddle. Well, we had a huddle in individual episodes and then we had the first guest, who was the first guest, Joe? I forget. Nick Glenn. Nick Glenn, I think. 
And then the second guest was Micah. And then Micah, I don't know if you if you want to go rewatch it, dig deep in our profile. He um he was like, hey man, I don't know what's going on. He knew kind of what autism was, but he's like, get me involved in this, man. Like, et cetera, et cetera. And then as kind of the stuff with Max, I mean, Max is more focused when he gets to Hawaii, more he's kind of living in the moment, which is totally fine. Um, we're like, okay, we're probably going to have to let him go just because things are getting more serious. And you'll see that every time. Like, we, we didn't let him go. I think Gators are your it perception was of how things are. It was, no, this is what the expectations were. And he's like, yeah, I'm just like not ready to commit to that. And that was it. Like, that was his decision. That's fair. Completely. That's fair. And then, so we were like, all right, we need to bring someone on board who's boys with us and fits the autism way. And who is more of a purpose fit than Micah Ma. And he just started on the podcast, and then he got really involved with it. Uh, and it's now part of the autism team, and then here we are. Um, but, yeah, that's how we got involved. All right. Is pro volleyball uh, very different from college volleyball? Joey? Uh, yes and no. I would say the f- the biggest jump you'll go is from high is from high school club level to college. Um, in terms from a physicality standpoint, the biggest thing from the college to professional level is the mental side of the game. Um, like the how efficient you have to be is um, escalated significantly. Um, from college to the professional game. Like, dumb stuff does not happen. Like, you don't get away with dumb stuff uh, as much as you do in college. And so, and you have to be so um, consistent is the other thing. Like, you're coming, it's like every single team that you play, you're playing against professionals every single week. So the worst team in the league is capable of beating. If you don't show up and play, they'll whoop you in a way. And so, um, that's the aspect for it. It's like, it's not the same in college where you can roll into some matches and, you know, Cruise. be half asleep and still win pretty handily. That doesn't happen at the pro level. You have to be dialed. And you take the full week to get ready for one match most of the time. And then you uh, play that match, you know. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes it, go- it doesn't. Uh, but there's, there's definitely a lot of differences within also just how teams are run um, and how, you know, players view the relationship with the coach and stuff like that so right. there's definitely yeah i don't know it's but there's also a lot of similarities i feel like as well i could go on about a bunch of stuff so that's just the kind of the surface level stuff yeah for me it's just i realize a lot of the the holes in my game because the expectation is so high so that's like the biggest thing for me um what's one thing you've always wanted to say on the pod but i've been too timid slash scared for me NCAA men's volleyball this year has been not very good, in my opinion. And I have friends on teams, and we're going to have guests on teams about it. So I've been not trying to say it, but that's honestly how I feel. And I'm, we should we should have someone on. I should discuss it because we were going to have a certain guest on um, in the college in, on a college team here, and I was going to talk to him about that and be like, what do you feel the level is? And maybe it'd be awkward because he's like, oh, I feel it's really, really good. I'd be like, oh, okay, okay. What do you, what do you, where do you feel the, so what are you comparing it to, and why do I'd you say I, that drop off is there? I think, okay, so I think I always say this, and this happened in club, and it happened in college. Once your class, I still think your guys' class is the greatest class of all time when it comes to like volleyball classes, years. Um, by far, if you just go down the list, you're just like, holy crap, look at all these insane players. So anything from there has gone down. I don't know why, because like club volleyball has grown in popularity, but in the club level. But in terms of just like skill, I don't know why, because that should mean, okay, you're getting a lot more athletes, like better athletes from these other sports, like stealing them. They should be better. But if you look at college volleyball, if you have a season where two or there's always a change of number one two or three seeds constantly like every week it means two things either one it's either really good or two it's really bad or not that great not really bad and i think it's a latter half uh, to be honest with you this year and i don't know there's been players and teams that i don't know i just feel have not been playing as well and, and i can't put my finger on why um mainly because matches are like 3 a.m 
one. Who do you think? Who do you think is going to win the championship this year? I think Long Beach. I always thought Long Beach would win it. To be honest with you. Nikolov, that kid is gnarly. Yeah, that's yeah. one player. I've I've seen some highlights from him, and I'm like, dude, this kid. He's a freshman. He's one of the top players in the world in his age. I mean, in World Championships, he played uh, and you know, balled out. And so, that yeah. kid's gonna be an issue for most teams for four yeah, years. Yeah, absolutely. And I see him at the local grocery stores here. He has like posters in the grocery store. Like I'm shopping here, cause from Bulgaria. I'm just like laughing. All right. Ooh, a little personal question, Joe. What are y'all listening to right now or watching on TV? Uh, I again? talked about. It, I think I talked about it last time. I, the Drive to Survive, the Formula mm-hmm. One show. I love that show. It's super cool. Formula One's an insane sport. Um, March Madness, baby. It's March Madness. Hell That's yeah, what I'm listening. Brother. That's what I'm watching. And then a ton of country music recently. I'm a huge country buff, so love me some country music. For me, I've been wa- I just watched the Batman. I've been watching the Last Kingdom. Me and my parents like to watch that. The latest season just came out, and then listening a lot of rap and R and B lately. All right, what do you think about men's collegiate club volleyball? For me personally, the people who I've met in club collegiate volleyball are some of the coolest and most like vol like I could say volley nerds. Like their passion for the game. Is so insane because you're not getting as big of a payoff. Well, in on paper, you're not getting that big of a payoff. You're not getting scholarship, right? But you're just doing it for the love of the game, and that's I feel like a lot of athletes in the community as well. Okay, it may not be like you may not be a professional player, but like you're in it for the love of the game. You know what I'm saying, Joe? One hundred percent. So I'm 100%. all aboard. It's so sick. Any any volleyball is good volleyball. To be honest, on the men's collegiate side, I do a lot of like the highlight watches whether it's social media on YouTube mm-hmm. I just will scroll through I don't especially with the time difference I don't sit there and like kind of watch a lot of stuff every if there's a big match or big upset I'll kind of just look at statistics just to see like what that looked like to see because I like to compare those also to professional like numbers because our coach is big here in Moonberg he's huge in analytics and I think most people know that like myself I'm not as much of a numbers guy. I mean I I can appreciate and use analytics at times but for me I'm like we're I think we're all kind of shoot by field type of people and so um and so you know for me I like to go men's college I'll just look at statistics what numbers are like for the top teams how that compares like in the Bundesliga here in Germany or just in general um but for the most part I watch from like an outsider's perspective I'm not super into that I like like without a system we're lifestyle brand at the end of the day so we're talking about like more lifestyle type of stuff, you know, individuals getting to know them and building relationships and stuff. We're not so much like a brand that's, you know, in-depth analysis of these types of matches. And so, uh, you know, that might be an aspect we get into down the road for sure. Um, and I could see us, but it, for just where we're at, um, I just kind of take things from an outsider's perspective. And I, I think, you know, it's also, when you get to the professional level, like your perspective changes. So I don't know. I could see like professional players when we were like our age, when we were playing in college, say the same thing. Like yeah, the level just dropped off. I don't know. Who knows? And that just might be like our change of perspective now that we're overseas here and we see very high level of volleyball. What that looks like. Um, obviously, our perspective changes. Right. Um, exercises to improve studying skills that really work. Uh, I think I went over this a little bit. Did we? Um, earlier, yeah. Oh, my sure we went this. Uh, swing block or stationary block? So, growing up, we were trained specifically to swing block. For myself, definitely swing block. Um, except in a couple situations. I, you know, I was always huge in swing block until I were to see how big some of these guys are. And, you know, to be honest, how much swing blocking hurts their blocking. <laughs> like, in out of system situations, the big guy is just literally stepping in front and going straight over. Some of these big guys, it's perfect and it does the job and I all for it. For me, I, I think it just depends on like what you feel and system that you're in and making sure that um, you just find the most efficient way to block. But I can see I can see positives for both. You know, the step block, you're gonna be much more straight up and down, not a whole lot of movement. 
but it's going to limit how high you're getting in your vertical. Swing block is strictly designed kind of to give you that momentum uh, and give you that rhythm and allow you to get a little more air on your jump. And so it just depends on like what you're looking for from a, from a blocking perspective. And it allows you to close out faster. That's the biggest thing. Like step blocking against a guy like Benjamin Tony Uti will be a little, little bit tough if you're if he's in system. <laughs> you're not gonna you're gonna struggle against that or some of the top setters in the world who like Dicheco and all those guys. It's really tough to step block and get there. So I think it's situational. Out of system balls, I totally see why people step block and can understand. It's like really simple, you just there and straight over and simple. That makes sense. I'm not really uh, upper, well, I don't really know a lot about swing blocking and step blocking, but from what I've learned, I do better on swing blocking, but I haven't had to swing block or step block at the highest level, so I would not know that. Um, how do setters handle being the team psychologist during the game? Team psychologist. Ooh. I think if anybody's worried about being a team psychologist on the court, uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I'd describe any player on the court as a team psychologist. Maybe as a joke or something. But I, I mean, think keeping that team together. I think it's though, a setter's. Yeah, yeah. Your job is a leader for sure. I think like if you're talking about team psychologists. It's like you're going and like having conversations about people's emotions and stuff. It's like. In a match, there's like you have split seconds to be able to do stuff, and you have to understand what gets people to tick, what gets people to like to freak out, what gets people like you got to understand that as a setter. But you're not sitting there like having those types of conversations because there's so much else going on that a setter has to be worrying about. And so, um, I get where they're going with the question, but I think the biggest thing for a setter is they. I always think a setter's job is to lead by example first of all because um, everybody's looking at them um, and then just understanding like little bits and pieces here like okay what does this player need to, if he's not in a rhythm what do I need to do to get him going a little bit or what can I do to get his mind off of, like he's really like antsy and stuff like little pieces like that but you're not like sitting there having conversations like once that becomes once that becomes the focus then you're going to be steps behind in the match I feel like because then you're just sitting there worried about stuff on your side of the net and you're not even focused about what's coming at you with the other team. True story. Um, what advice do you have for a high school volleyball player? I would say right now, just make sure you're getting on the court. I think a lot of people care too much what team they're on. Get on the court, yeah. play volleyball, and have fun. That's just the main thing. Play, 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 play as much as you can. Every aspect, exactly. grass, beach. Play beach volleyball. Coaches who don't think beach volleyball is beneficial to your is, Slap. I think, don't know what they're talking about most of the time. Uh, play every style because you really can learn something from every different style. Play short court. Play all these different things because uh, you'll learn so much. To be honest, I would play more short court than anything if you're at that age. Yeah. Short court, grass, like all that stuff. I think you learn way more than six on six training necessarily from. In that age, I think six on six, you know, while while training, in that at that level and stuff is very basic and elementary, so to speak. You're not getting mm -hmm. too much out of it. Like play stuff where you're getting tons of touches. You're getting like different environments, different situations, which is short court with grass, like mini court. I love those games. I think it's super beneficial. Absolutely. Can you explain the college recruiting process and what coaches are looking for? So. College recruiting process has changed a little bit since I was recruited. Um, there's a lot of different aspects that have changed, obviously, and just in also NCAA bylaw as well. Um, this is, I think, kind of a tough question and a super long answer. Like, what is a coach looking for? The answer is every single coach has a different perspective of what they want their team to look like, the type of players they want to bring in, what they're looking at. Some coaches care a lot about personality. Some care more about can you score the ball That's, at the end of the day? Some care, like, in performance, you know? And so, um, obviously, some schools like Stanford, the Ivy Leagues, you're going to care more about your grades first. Before they even look at your volleyball, they're going to say, what does your transcript look like? Because they need to look, they need to know if you're even worthwhile spending time to look at from the volleyball side because there's a certain standard, obviously, for those schools. Um, and so, they go ask your club coaches what you're like as a teammate. They go ask... Sometimes high school coaches, I heard some coaches reach out to my high school coach. Um, 
you know, they reach out to all of these people because they really want to get an understanding of like the type of person you are, who you are, uh, when people aren't looking, um, and all these different aspects, because for the most part, if you're going to top level program, there's a certain culture they're trying to build and they don't want to bring a cancerous, you know what I mean by that cancerous, uh, Mm -hmm. um, individual in, it's like, they don't want you to come in and kind of create issues especially like right off the bat i think when you get into college for the first time and you experience stuff for the first time like you can everybody changes significantly through throughout their college uh or their time in college and so you know with that being said then then they might kind of grow into something that they weren't before but they want to make sure before that they're coming in like hawaii right now i would say the culture right there is really really like in a good place i would say for the most part and they have the right type of people in the program to, or the right mindset in the program. Um, the biggest thing for programs like that with all the success they've had is making sure that the kids who are coming in, freshman, sophomore, don't get this sense of like, oh, I'm like, I've made it, you know, I'm just, I played mm-hmm. at Hawaii and stuff. Like they don't understand that guys have gone through like three, four years of working their ass off to get into a position, put Hawaii into the position that it is now to be able to recruit top or kids, get top international talent, get all this t- uh, investment from partnerships, um, boosters, all this different stuff. And so Hawaii's in a really solid place right now. I think, you know, all the top schools are in a similar place and they're really looking at that the X factors because they can go find plenty of kids who can set the ball of the area for and set middle and hit high balls. There's plenty of kids out there um, that can do it at a similar level. And so those are kind of the X factors that they're looking for. In terms of the process, it's different for every, every single person has a different recruiting story. I would just say that you make sure you go with person who believe, believes in you and what you can bring to the table. Um, I was thinking if there's somebody who like is very invested into you and says like, hey, they just love your game and they, they were recruiting you for the position you want to play. They're recruiting you for type of person you are, what you can bring to their team. They see you having an impact on the court. Like that's something to really consider, even if it isn't the ideal school that you had at the beginning. So for me, that's always a huge, uh, but at the same time, like if you want to go and prove and earn a spot at a bigger school, I respect that decision. It's really comes up to like what you want from your experience. Absolutely. And also a little side note here. If you are fortunate enough to get a college coach looking uh, and watching you on your court, make sure you don't look at them while they're recruiting you or, like, glance at them. And then just it just gets weird, and it's just a big turnoff for a lot of coaches. Just focus on the game. I think a lot of kids get caught up in that, oh, blah, blah, here. And they're like, uh, and they and, there's, and, and, and I watch it happen. And they just give small glances to these coaches. or what, It's just, like, really awkward, too. And it's a big turnoff. So make sure you're focused on the game, and the college coaches will find you. All right, who are y'all's dream partners slash sponsors for out of system and individually? I don't know. Cause, uh, uh, yeah, we're we're open to a lot of things. There's a lot of stuff that we're open to. I don't I don't think we're gonna go Puma see this person. Yeah. What for me? For me, my pivot too is my pivots. If Puma wants to sponsor us, so we can all get Pumas or pivots. Go for it, baby. But other than that, I will, not be, I will not be wearing pivots. That's for sure. Bro, no what do chance. you hate against? Why do you hate those things, dude? They're not good volleyball shoes. That's why. They're great. <laughs> they're horrible. Shoes. They're the goats, Joe. They're the goats. They got stolen. They're so good in Hawaii. They're that good. <laughs> All right. Favorite fan interactions from shout out to Ben Ritzema. I want to give a quick shout out to Ben Ritzema. Him at Wapaka was on another level. Stud. Him at Wapaka was on another stud. level. Oh, well, first of all, that was sick. Dude, yeah. some of the events we went to and just having, like, our group of people show up, I hope that happens again to all to more of the events as well. That's super sick, first of all. So those are definitely up there. I was talking the other day about at Hawaii when we – I don't know if this happened to you, but I remember – this was more so maybe my junior sophomore year. I got asked the prom, like, three different times. It was just that. funny. And that takes courage. It was in front of, like – a huge crowd of people too. I was just like, dang, that takes courage. Three different times, say, like, two different times. 
Good um, God. That's brutal, Joe. No, not the same person. Okay. Not the Still, same person. Still, lady but, killer. Dude, they're 16 years old, bro. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> not bad. Um, um, Thought I'd catch luckily, a boy. <laughs> luckily, we were traveling all those, so it was an easy excuse. Because just in general, like, we couldn't do that, even though it's super sweet and super cool that they uh, would consider that. weird, too. Yeah, I always gave I would always gave him a shirt or something. I always try to make sure to give him something because I felt bad. Because that takes courage. Like I said, that takes a lot of courage to go do that in front of all their friends. And they just and turned her fans. down all in front of all those people. No, they good? understood. Yeah, I, I think they knew that it was not a situation. This is a good one, this is, this is a good one here. Do you think the life of an athlete is easier because most people will? Oh, is easier than most people because sports teach you more directly. I would say no, because you are obviously all jobs and everything is is based on your performance, but mm-hmm. sports is it like direct performance. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna be like, damn, bro, I did not file this cabinet well today. You know what I'm saying? Like you're gonna have one of those yeah. days, but like sports, if like it's not just like okay, I got a two three hour practice and I'm good to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that that'll affect your mental health down the road. That's why you see so much sports psychology. And you see it its own like I mean they have their own major for it and everything like that. That, that that's a big subject. There's a reason for that. It's cause it affects your well being. Your and obviously a lot of people's jobs affect their well being, but like on ta- on on in terms of performance and everything like that, it's like it can really, really mess with your mind and everything. And I think it can be harder. And it's a more harsher reality at times, uh, in terms of life lessons, in terms of lessons as well. That's how I feel. And not to say that people don't have a heart out there. People have a lot of heart that aren't athletes. Um, obviously, we're privileged to play the, hopefully play the sport you love and in some cases make a good amount of money from it and make a living off it. And I don't want to like completely throw that out the window, but in terms of mental and physical uh, attributes and, and, and whatnot, it can be very, very hard on you for sure. Um... What should I think about when choosing a college that's recruiting me? Their rank? Question mark. No. No. I mean, Man. people. Do I mean, that, you could, like good. Like obviously, you want to be. Rank is way down the list. From I mean, you could, like it could be something you add into that, but the also the truth is is like. You want to look at who's coming in your class, who's <laughs> who are the freshmen, because the seniors and juniors that are there right now are going to be gone. So it's like, see plenty of programs that are top five, and then next year they're out of the top 15 because they just don't have their yeah. top heavy. So that's like the least amount of thing you should be worrying about um, is what they're currently ranked. Mm-hmm. It's nice to see that you're going to a school that's like number one, number two, but oh, yeah. So that's definitely at the bottom of the list. Yeah, and uh, I agree with that. I mean, obviously, if you're one of the top players, that's going to be taken into account more than if you're not a top player. But where you fit is going to be way more important than if you're winning. So there's a lot of winning players out there that are just not happy in their situations. Um, how to get in a D1 college if you're an international student in high school? Play club, my man. Play club, send out those videos, baby. Yeah, club is where you do it, 100%. Have you guys ever been through a burnout as an athlete? If so, what do you do to overcome it? For me, no, I've been fortunate enough where I haven't been. It's just more, I can be a little small. The best word, I can, like I remember when I'd lose when I was younger, I'd be a little like, bitchy. I'd be like, oh, I'm tired of playing here. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like that. But in terms of an actual burnout, no, I'm lucky enough to say that, Joe. Yeah, no, uh, I don't think so. My our dad was always our dad worked us super tough. Like when we were in, when we were training, it was not really. But he always was really good about making sure that we had breaks at certain points, like two week breaks. We'd go on trips and stuff to make sure to give us that space. Um, and yeah, 
I've always been super motivated, super driven. I wouldn't be playing volleyball if I wasn't. I always said that, like, I'm never going to do something in life that I'm not passionate about because it just doesn't make sense to me to do that. Yeah. Okay, this one, Libero question. What's a drill that Liberos need to be doing? I think there's a specific skill, but there, I mean, I don't think there's a specific drill, but there is a skill, and that's the easy balls, whether it's setting or even free balls. I actually practice free balls a lot now. Like, like I'd be like, okay, you take it for granted, but you realize how important they are over there. And it's just any easy ball in any play of a libero is so crucial. Like, the easy balls are more important than the hard balls a lot of the time. Um, so work on that, and then work on your speed and agility because the faster you are, the more easy balls. Well, the more easier easier balls there are. Okay. Um, we'll go two more here. Joe, tips for jump spin serving? Uh, jump spin serving, one thing that we trained really well at Hawaii, and I think that's why Hawaii's always on the top serve, uh, serving teams, is obviously your toss is super important, but at Hawaii, every single day, every single day, Milan Zarkovic is the Serbian, uh, crazy assistant coach, but he is adamant about making sure that you start from like short distance and move your way to long distance. And you really get that like, you gotta understand, you gotta be able to control the ball from 20 feet away before you can control the ball at 40 feet away and then 60 feet away and so on. Like, and then you build out from there. Um, and you have to be able to control the ball at all those different levels. And that's really how you dial in your serving. It's like, I, we start, we toss and jump from the 10 foot line. It's like, put it on a target, you gotta hit that target. Once you kinda, we go through a certain amount of reps over there, we move it back and then we move it back. It's everyday type of stuff. And then you go through stuff, once you get to the end line, it's like cross, line, cross, line. You have to be so good with your wrist and, and, uh, and your contact on the ball and developing that. And then the speed comes um, from the weight room, repetitions, all that speed. The speed will come once you kind of have the rhythm, but the 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 rhythm from the toss and your approach, um, that'll be developed through training and stuff and control, but you've got to get the control down first on the spin serve. So that's the biggest thing I have to say is like work from short to long because when you do that all the time, like even at professional level, you just go straight into just straight serving. It's like first two minutes sometimes is god awful because <laughs> if you yeah. haven't done anything and so i was super good and you toss you jump and you serve from the 10 foot line and you go full maximum and work back i think that's a really good weight but you have to do that every single day and work on that target set targets out for us it was actual people so liberos would be over there they'd be switching there was a uh, element of them for me for Craziness. them to be yeah it, but it's super high level stuff and once you watch a practice and you always, if you go into like Hawaii's gym in the middle of season, it's just, people really enjoy it because it's like there's an art to it too. And that's how Milan designs practices. It's like super artistic and how all the drills are designed are, I think, uh, are a big reason for why Hawaii's at the level it is now. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think that even a lot of, I think that Hawaii might not have the best players or whatever, but like, you see a lot of improvement there just because those drills. Like, as a libero, I think that – as a libero, I think I have better hand contact than a lot of uh, – than a lot of outside hitters, like, when I was in NCA, And that's just because we – they luckily, he put the liberos in the position where I could hit, and that's just kind of cool. So you just see how it definitely translates on the court. So it makes that grass transition a lot easier. Last question. Can you please bring back the out-of-system board shorts? I will do anything. I'll answer that. Addison board shorts are coming on their way. and Just be ready this summer for a drop and whatnot. They'll be on it soon. And they'll be on a website. And you can get them year-round. But we're working on that as we speak. But on that note, you can still get a lot of our merch on the website. So make sure you go check us out. Addison.net. Link in the bio for any merch and support the boys. Alrighty, Joe. It's been the 75th episode, man. It's been sick. It's always glad. Uh, it's always sick. Just talking to fans, you know, a lot of the time. As we're over here, still connecting with them. And uh, just remember, out of system. Out of system, out of system. Nice. Nice. Remember, guys, if you can't handle the heat, get out of the damn kitchen. This has been another episode presented by Out of System.